Let me share my screen as well. All right, um, so I'll just start with an introduction. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. We're here at the ISLA Monday admins meeting, and we've got um, Sister Rasha Al Hagan. She is a board member of ISLA for the past three and a half years. We're so happy to have her. And um, she's also the academic, um, she's also an academic dean. Rasha, am I getting that right? At Sandy Springs Friends School, and um, is preparing her teachers for hybrid teaching and learning and um, is also the facilitator for the hybrid design series that ISLA's online, uh, for ISLA's online PD series that has started, alhamdulillah. Go for it, Sister Rasha. Jazakallah khairan, Shaza. Um, and I, I am seeing several of the people that are in the course here. It feels really good. I feel like we're building a relationship. A lot of people feel like online courses, the relationship part is really hard to build. But um, seeing the names here, seeing people's uh, input and their responses to the different engagements in the course, I'm getting, a, 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 I feel like I'm connected to, to you guys. So that, that feels really good. Um, so as I talk about in the course and some of the videos I put up in the course, whenever I find anything or do anything, I'm an avid researcher. I'd love to share it, especially with my Islamic uh, study, uh, my Islamic school um, counterparts. I'd love to share what I've learned. And so, um, you know, those of you who are in the course, that's very much an, for academic leaders. It's kind of a train the trainer model. We are working on, a, on one for the teachers. Um, and I wanted to kind of give you that, guys, for those of you who are not in the course or for those of you who are wondering what's the teacher course going to be like, I wanted to share some, some things, some things I've learned. And they're, they're really going to be 3,000 foot view. Um, for, so, you know, not going to go into detail because, you know, we, that it, take, it would take a lot longer than the 15 minutes I have to be able to go into any detail, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so you guys, you know, once COVID-19 hit, uh, act, you know, leaders moved into, oh my God, what are we going to do for safety? Are we going to open the school or not? What is facilities? What is admissions? Um, we, we, we had to worry about these big item things um, that really affect our school, affect our enrollment, affect our finances. Um, and now that we've made some of those decisions, what, what could have kind of been left in the back burner is how do we prepare our teachers to be able to deliver uh, content in any kind of online, virtual, hybrid model? And I know a lot of schools across the country have decided, A, that they, a lot of schools have decided we're going to open up five days a week. Everybody's going to be on campus. We'll try to do social distancing. Um, so we really don't need to train our teachers in a hybrid model. Um, and I will actually disagree completely with that because the idea is that you don't know when the state or the school or the county might need to close and you will be in the same situation as you were in in the spring uh, where you are you know, teachers have planned uh, for face to face and then now they need to scramble and plan for virtual. So, um, you know, one of the things I want to tell you about is whether you're opening your school completely virtual or hybrid or is going to be completely on campus. It really doesn't matter. For the, to be prepared for this, uh, to be prepared throughout this time, you really need to train your teachers to plan virtually because it's much easier to toggle from virtual to face to face than it is to do the opposite. Um, uh, if my teachers have planned virtually, then I can just tweak instead of giving a video, I'm going to actually be in class and teach something. Um, but to do it the opposite way is, is, is much harder. And so I'm my my encouragement to everybody is to make sure you have trained your teachers to plan virtually so that they can tweak and toggle for face-to-face -face if they need to. Um, we've kind of broken down the process to prepare your courses or to, 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 to build those courses into three parts, three stages. I talk about the designing of the course separate from the building of the course, which is separate from the delivering of the course. This is very much an online virtual hybrid type language. We might not separate those three things when we're designing courses for the face-to-face. -face. But the idea of designing a course, you're designing it backwards from the competencies or essential questions or learning objectives, right? Um, that's going to be really important because if I have, if I've decided that my course is based on these five big competencies, they're big ideas, they're big essential questions, they're kind of like the central ideas of the course. If I have a student who's sick and needs to now take two or three weeks or maybe a month or off um, 
I can be able to go back to their assignments and things that I've designed in the course and pare it down and say, okay, they can do this or they don't have to do that and still not change the outcomes of the course because any assignment that's related to a specific major competency is an assignment they have to complete. Any assignment that is not related to that, then they don't have to complete. So it allows you to be able to pare down your content to the most, to the, to like the most essential elements that, that, that make your course what it is. So that's kind of the design phase. Um, the build phase is basically taking what you've designed, the backwards design, the assessments that you've done, and you now put it into a consistent and predictable template for your learning management system. Um, this is also where you talk about the tech tools. I love that Isla is doing this tech expo because there are tools out there that could help you, but you want to make sure you're intentional in the tools that you use, right? So one of the things that we know affects student-teacher relationships in the online world is that if they're not able to submit something on time, if they're not able to um, use a tool appropriately, that increases the friction and that affects the student-teacher relationship. It also increases friction from the parents because they see that their children are frustrated. So you really want to make sure in the building the course phase that you've chosen for your school intentional tech tools. You don't just use tech for the sake of tech. You want to use things that are flexible, one or two or three things that work within your LMS so students are not leaving the LMS. Um, and then we talk about the delivery of the course, um, and that's basically the teacher competency best practices. For example, you know, um, we tell our teachers when a student emails you in a face-to-face, -face, please respond within 24 hours. In the online world, that's not appropriate. If a student has an assignment due, you want that timely feedback. And it's probably more like a 30 minutes to an hour and a half, right? So those, the, the, so the, the way you kind of design, the way you kind of uh, give the expectations to teachers around timely feedback for the online model is very different than for the on-campus model. Also, the delivering of the course, for example, we'll talk about the teacher being an effective communicator. Well, we know that's really important, but in the online model and the hybrid model, that becomes even more important. Any ambiguity, any, uh, any uh, inefficiencies in the written communication translates immediately to a student-teacher relationship that is full of friction, or now you as an admin are having to deal with a teacher that wasn't clear with their instructions here or there. Um, and, so, and so that just causes a lot of friction for everybody involved. So if you think about the process of building courses um, or like creating courses for an online or hybrid model, you wanna think in these three distinct stages, designing, building, and then the delivering. One of the things we did through our um, admin courses, we actually gave the admin participants specific standards. So what makes up the design part, what makes up the build part, and what makes up the teacher competencies. And through the course, we also gave the teachers, the, the admin, uh, the, the standards, and we will tell them, here's what, here's what basic practice looks like, here's what distinguished practice looks like, and then here's kind of what insufficient practice looks like so that you can have a growth mindset and be able to guide your teachers within those three um, kind of buckets. Um, we also talk a lot about how you build consistency and predictability through the build phase with a consistent template uh, through your LMS. And that really depends on your LMS. Um, and I shared a lot of examples of templates and um, examples of what I call cadences and, and cycles of learning that you use within your, within your um, school. One of the other features that we talk about in the admin course is an LMS evaluation tool. Um, your online courses uh, are heavily dependent on your LMS. And so you have to make sure that the LMS you have, the learning management system, is incredibly robust for online and hybrid teaching. Um, you know, I, sh I share examples in the course of, 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 of uh, my our school and how we use Google Classroom, and that could be a, pl a place for your LMS. I know other schools use Canvas, some schools use Schoology. Whatever it is that you've used, you wanna make sure that it's robust. So I provide a couple of different evaluation tools that you can kind of grade your your, um, your LMS through. Um, a lot of you have asked about the teacher course. And so the teacher course will take students through uh, the standards as I did with the admin, but from a teacher's perspective. Um, so we spend some time analyzing the standards with the teachers. 
We then talk a lot about designing your course backwards. That may or may not be something that you do in your school. And so we talk about what are master competencies? How do you write them? What's the what's a formula that you can write them? How, what is the difference between a master competency and the learning objective? We talk about Bloom's taxonomy. Again, how to write both, and pro providing feedback for that. One of the things that really presented teachers and I have to teach English course through um, so, uh, the spring, this last, this last spring, it was really hard. Assessment is really hard and it's not as easy. You don't have the student in front of you and you can see their head on the desk or you, can, you can't see them engaged. And so that's really hard. And so we talk about the different types of assessments that you need to do in a hybrid um, or an online model. Assessments of learning, which is basically your summative. Assessment for learning, which is basically your formative. And then assessment as learning. And that's something I learned new, like the idea that, that as the students are learning, how are you gathering that feedback? Um, and how are you get, getting that data? And how is that data helping you uh, design and build your course appropriately in the in the follow-up modules um, we also will walk teachers through how to create and develop a course map um, and then create and develop a unit in the in their LMS admin that decide their teachers are going to take this course have to make sure that they have decided what their LMS is going to be and what that template is going to look like otherwise teachers are going to come into this course and they're going to be like I'm going to tell them okay now go take this unit and now design it in your LMS template. And if, they're, if they come back and say, well, I don't know what the LMS is or what the template is, then the course isn't as meaningful. So it's really important that admin uh, make sure that they've made their decisions about LMS and that they've made sure that they have made decisions about templates before a teacher um, enrolls in, in, in this course. Um, so that's kind of a basics, some of the things, even if you don't enroll in, your, in this course, you know, you could be talking to your teachers about designing backwards. You could be talking to your teachers about master competency and about assessments. Those are really, really important to have discussions around, whether it's through your orientation or through whatever model you have decided you're going to be doing. Um, those are the things that kind of make or break the, the, the hybrid uh, or the online course. One thing I really want you guys to take away from this is it's super important, keep it simple teachers having to design in this way, it's like going back to your first year of teaching. And so there's a, it's what I call, it's a, it's a heavy cognitive load. And so you wanna keep things really simple for your teachers as simple as possible and think of your teachers as your students. So the way you want teachers to scaffold learning for your students, you as the academic deans or as the, uh, the academic leaders of your school, wanna make sure you scaffold all of this learning for your teachers as well so that they are successful. That's it for me. I'm happy to take questions if needed. Welcome, Claire. I'm going to um, stop the recording, but I invite you guys to um, to ask questions as desired and needed. <laughs>